racing on ahead. Okay, so um, you used these formulas for the energy, right? Um, and then uh, you plugged in n equals 7 and n equals 5, and you got that this was the energy difference. And then you're using this equation. What do you use for h? What are the units for h? If you look at them in the inside front cover, they're in joules anyway. The units for h are in joules, so we've got to translate uh, from electron volts into joules. Lots of unit conversions here. So you remember that there's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt. Yeah. So we do that unit conversion. Right, so you get What did you get as your answer? Good, which by the way is 518 nanometers, which seems like a reasonable wavelength. Okay, so that went pretty well, um, except that we have to translate. When you write these equations, it's always important to keep in mind they're in electron volts. Uh, but we, this is, H is in Planck's constants and joules, so you got to make that unit conversion there. Or are we going up or down here? Down. All right, so it's good you drew that picture. This much, this much energy is exactly the energy to another state. Yeah. So I should just figure it out. You know. So you got that the ground state was 122.4 electron volts? Yeah. All right, negative, of course. Yeah. Um, okay, so what were your initial thoughts there? Why did you say that it couldn't? Or, not that it couldn't, but I was just saying that it couldn't if those photon packets didn't equal the exact jump to one of the... Right. Now, it doesn't seem very likely that there would be two jumps that were both 54.4 electron volts. Oh, it's not like at one time. No, two successive two photons. photons. E.g., absorb one and then later absorb another. Okay. 
Yeah, so that seems very unlikely. I don't think you would, it would be a huge coincidence if one jump happened to be the same as another. But we can do this a little bit more. Um, what's the energy of the uh, What's the energy of the second level? Let's work that out. possible energy transition is way bigger than what they want us to absorb. So it doesn't even, it's not even a matter of absorbing the two successive photons. We couldn't even absorb the first one. Yeah. One thing that they're testing there is notice you can't just take the two fo you can't just take one photon and then wait for the other photon and then get to where you're going. Yeah. But each photon has to get you where you're going, if you're, uh, especially if you're going to be waiting between them. Okay. So what was the answer to B? That you, that you can't. Right. All right. You can do C. What is the frequency of light necessary to pull the electron out of a ground state of the fit tube? So, 122.4 is what you need. Times 12.6. Good. So you saw that you have to translate into joules, again, from the electron volts. How do you know that's how much energy you need? Well, remember, we have to get to zero. Yeah. If we can get to zero, that's when we're ionized. Well, from negative 122.4 to zero is 122.4 electron volts. So that's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. Frequency. So the big thing to watch out for here, a lot of people don't realize that ionization means getting to zero. So we had to go from 122.4 to zero, and then we had to do the uh, unit conversion again. Okay, good. They all Y, so we have to use a small angle. Yeah, that's right. So dy is it dy over L equals M lambda? And for D we have point oh one meters over five hundred or five thousand slits. How do you know that M is 1? Because uh, it's 10 from central maximum and the side maximum limit is 1. Oh, they said M was 1. Yeah. Okay, good. They did say 1. Um, so it's negative 
or just 0.005 meters.